<laughs> Scarborough, Western Australia. This 14k strong suburb of Perth was entirely built around a hotel constructed to observe the 1987 America's Cup. A yacht race that firstly has fans that have the uh, narrowing down abilities of a grade schooler asked to highlight notes that are important given their highlights for the yacht race is an hour and a half long and for some weird reason counts as a keystone event in the state's history and is referenced in every political history book I've read. A whopping two! I wouldn't be surprised if it was given a cheeky reference in Marcus Aurelius's meditations. Right under the line, don't look down on death, but welcome it. It too is one of the things required by nature. He also wrote, oh, and in uh, 2000 years, some unknown southern land will win a yacht race and be pretty cool, I guess. I mean, I don't know. And the Romans really didn't like ships and navies, so it's not that cool to me, personally. Okay, back to genocide in Germans. Hell yeah. If there was a building that represented Perth's love for brutalism, it would first be the, um, surfing clubs building but um, I didn't think about that before writing this script so it would be the Observation City Hotel known as the Rendezvous Hotel in actual real life terms but yeah, that's a besides the point. The only distinguishable difference between this building and one of those depressing Soviet style apartments in Norilsk is the filter an architectural embodiment of TikTok success in making things that are not really that great look really cool by giving it a slightly different colour scheme. If you remove the sandy beaches and sun-draped weather that blesses our gorgeous environment, you would struggle to recognise it even more than when you try to get people to identify Einstein without his wacky-do hair. I know not what weapons World War III will be fought, but I know I will fight a war with my hairdresser every day. True Albert Einstein quote, I swear. I mean, just, just look at it. Smack some snow onto it and no doubt Gavrod Koshar would confuse it for one of his own. Ah yes, of course. I think I remember designing that piece of excellent work when I was held up in the frigid Siberian North. Though I swear I designed it with more exposed gas and water pipes. Keep in mind, this isn't a public housing commission where function prioritises form 10 to 1. This was designed by rich bougies for looking at yacht races for crying out loud. Yeah, that's normal for my videos. I know for sure that if Australia had a Bolshevist revolution, the Perth elite would be completely okay going to work camps like Gavarog was forced to while creating Perth, which he obviously did, that's just an established fact at this point. Perth of the North, Norilis. Just imagine Gina just like, hey, this is like a never-ending America's Cup race and set me to race against my sleep replacing quotas and the racetrack is the northwest coast. Just reminds me that Newman to Port Edlin Rail was built in record-breaking time. They set a world record on this line. 4.35 miles laid in just under 12 hours. And one of the arguments as to why it was was because everyone absolutely smashed beers while they did it. They sunk a beer after like laying every single sleeper. Scarborough existed before, of course, established at the nice age of 1869 with the first resident, John Hughes. What a man! And what a land. Such wow features as uh, zero agricultural value and 100% windy. For you Eastern Siders, it may be helpful to say that the place reported back then was the uh, Manly of the West, which makes sense as most fanboys would have moved to Fremantle, which would give the western suburbs a higher portion of manly things like facial hair and dry skin. Then again, Fremantle's evened out with bougie hipsters on the beer front, and there are muscle men in Freo, it's just they are often rounded into pens and forced to play for the Fremantle Dockers, so you don't really see them on the street that We much. keep losing the Premiership because we are still confused as to what is going on. They just give us a mask and chucked us into a field of rainbows and huggable chibi eagle. The Esplanade of Scarborough opened around 1932, likely as an attempt to cure the weirdly increased cases of depression that existed in the world at the time. And probably a preemptive industrialization initiative 
when the state intended to declare independence in the case New South Wales caused an independence war and justified Australian secession. If it was a way to kill depression, it would go down in history as a more effective strategy than such epic depression curing tricks as no longer giving people things to do and eliminating their access to goods and services. God, I love pre-Keynesian economics. Back when printing money was cool, or at least didn't require as much mental gymnastics to justify. Well, the wheat bell might be the food bowl of Western Australia, but there's a little something called the snake pit of Western Australia. And that is the glorious snake pit of Scarborough. Called as such, because much like the Holy Roman Empire, it is neither snake nor pit nor empire. It is just a giant skate park. If you ever want to experience one of the deepest pits that you could ever befall, that is at least made of concrete and not a terrible nuclear bomb experiment done during the Menzies era, then take a look at this glorious little park here. Give it a go, doll. Puts North Korea's to shame and is probably the reason the Instagram solely focuses on shoes for some reason. 